All right. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a nice weekend. Happy Monday. Nice, sunny, chilly morning. Um, I'm going to continue to 2023 statistical project projections for the New York Yankees. Last week, we started with the starting rotation. Today, we're going to focus on the bullpen. I'll give you my stat projections for 2023 for all these guys. Um, two things, too. I initially had Junior Fernandez on the list, but since he was put on waivers and claimed immediately by the Blue Jays, he's not he's not on here. So I actually have one spot open because I do think they're either going to make a trade or sign somebody before the season starts, or somebody's going to win out a spring uh, rotation, I mean, a bullpen spot at a spring training. So there'll eventually be someone else added to the list at some point, and I'll do a projection for who that is as well. And then we're going to pivot to the offense uh, for 2023 projections. That ought to be coming up this week as well. So be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that yet, if you don't want to miss those and you don't want to miss all the good content uh, because the hot stove is still heating, okay? It's not it's not on fire right now, but this is what happens. You get a couple quiet days and then a lot of activity, a couple quiet days, a lot of activity. That's kind of the way it's been. But it's about, <clears throat> I'd say, 100-plus guys that still need to be signed. And there's going to be trades too. So a lot of activity is going to be going on, and I don't want you to miss any of it. So, and I thank you for subscribing. But if you don't want to miss any of it, just hit the notification bell as well, and you won't miss anything. So, today again, we're going to focus on the relief pitchers for the New York Yankees. And again, they had a great bullpen. They've had a great bullpen for quite a few seasons, and this is one of Cashman's stronger points. Um, whether it be drafting guys or trading guys or whatnot, and now we've got masters of identifying talent with Sabian here and and Manaya here. So. I think it could become a three-headed monster there as well and bringing in all different types of guys. So whether it be trading for them or drafting them or scouting, we have some more, so many uh, expert eyes now to really, really help make this team better. I'm pretty excited about that, and I hope that you are too. But let's start with the bullpen here, okay? we got Domingo Herman, who I think will be, if he's not traded, he's going to go about four and three-ish, 368, ERA, 74 innings pitching, about 56 Ks. Not a never big strikeout guy. Um, and he, he could have the stats, but too, but one of the things I want to mention is I think the starting rotation with the addition of Carlos Rodon and Frankie Montez coming back healthy, they're going to be able to go a little bit deeper into games. Even Luis Severino continuing his step forward, maybe going to 150 innings this, uh, this season. He was up about a hundred last season. So, which I think will take the load and even Nestor Cortez, maybe throwing a little bit more innings. It might take the load off some of the bullpen. So you may not see a lot of high innings pitch guys here, but I think you'll see a lot of quality pitching. Because of that. So I think they're going to complement each other that way. And I think uh, that's a good thing, too. So, but that's we've got for Domingo Herman. Again, he'll probably get some spot starts, long relief. We never know with him. Michael King, which I'm, I, we hear that he's not going to be ready for the, the start of the season. But at some point, I think he'll be back early in the season, coming back healthy after that pretty rough injury, which he did not need Tommy John, which was a breath of fresh air to hear that. But I have him going about seven and four, about a 289 ERA. 53 innings pitch and about 62 strikeouts right around there. And again, these are not exact predictions. These are where I think they're going to fall in. That's why I'm calling them projections, not predictions. Wandy Peralta, to me, was a godsend for us last year. Now, he's our only uh, reliever right now from the left-handed side. And whether the Yankees are comfortable with that, and they could be totally fine with that, or whether they bring in another lefty soon or in spring training, uh, I think he's going to continue to put out great stats. And this guy was a cleanup man for, he got us out of so many jams and high leverage situations last year, saved Michael King. He saved Clay Holmes. He saved a lot of these guys. So thank the heavens for Wandy Peralta. You know, I have him, I have him going three and three with another sub three ERA, 280, about 52 innings pitch, about 57 strikeouts, a little bit more than a strikeout per inning. I think we're going to have several sub three ERA guys, which is a great thing. That excites me about the Yankees. So stellar bullpen. Johnny, uh, uh, Tommy Canely is back now too, which excites me too. I think this guy is going to be good friends with guys like Judge and, and 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 Harrison Bader. This guy brings just energy to the team. He's got a great personality, he's a great teammate. So and coming back from after two years and recovering from a, an injury as well, I think it was Tommy John, his off-speed pitches and his pitching arsenal, I think he's going to be a welcome addition here. And even though we have guys like Lasagna, we have Ron Marinaccio, we've got Clay Holmes, Michael King. Adding a guy like this and his best inning, if you, if you look at his career stats, his lowest ERA is in the ninth inning. So he can bring value in a lot of different ways to the Yankees. So I have him going about one and one, 291 ERA, 34 innings pitching, about 36 strikeouts, and get making some big pitches, making some, throwing some big innings. Ron Marinaccio, I think, is going to continue his development as well. He's going to go one and two at a 275 ERA, right around here, 48 innings pitched, about 60 strikeouts. And that would be Great production from him as well. I'd, be, I'd sign up for that any day. 
Uh, Jonathan Lewisig, again, I think he's going to continue to be, and he had a rough, a couple of rough spots last year, but I think he's going to be, you know, as usual, pretty stellar self. He's gonna, I am going around two and two, 315 ERA and about 50 innings pitch and about 48 strikeouts. And again, that's good production I would sign up for as well. We have a lot of these guys who can come, come in, throw multiple innings, do other things. So I think the versatility we have here is going to be great. Lou Trevino, um, he had a rough go with the Oakland A's, but when he came, when he was traded here in the Frankie Montas trade, I think he, uh, you know, Matt Blake did did a great job on him. He had about about a 1.7 ERA. He went to the Yankees, so I haven't gone about four and four with a full season with the Yankees. Not about 3.26 ERA, 52 innings pitch, about 61 strikeouts. He got some big outs too, and he's got some good. Uh, he's got some good, a good pitch arsenal. As does Clark Schmidt, as does all the guys on this on this slide here. Clark Schmidt is another one who could spot start and believe. I think he'll continue to make some progression here as well. He had a pretty solid season. He got hit a few times, but as do a lot of the other bullpen guys in the Yankees. But I'm going about three and three with a 3.42 ERA, about 58 innings pitch, 55 strikeouts. He may get a couple of spot starts too, but I'll sign up for that production anyway as well. And the last guy, Greg Weiser, who came up from the Yankees farm, and he's got some nasty stuff on his pitches. And I haven't I have him sticking around too. About a one and one, about a 3.50 ERA, 19 innings pitch, about 17 strikeouts, somewhere right around there, making the next step. And he might not even make it through spring training, but I have a feeling he will, and that excites me too. So I have I have those uh, guys pr- pitching pretty well. On the last slide, a couple of surprises here. I think Jimmy Cordero. I think he's going to make the team. He's a, this guy's a ground ball inducing specialist. Got some pretty good off speed stuff, as does Tommy Kingley as well. Jimmy Cordero, I think he'll be a surprise. He was you know, on the shelf for a little bit last season or two. So, But I have him making the team. Um, one and one, about a 380 ERA, 23 innings pitch, 22 strikeouts. Like not a ton of um, innings pitch, but I think he'll be complimentary of a lot of the other relievers there. He'll make some big pitches too. He might have a couple of spots of growing pains, but it's only because he hasn't been on a major league mound in a while. But that's normal too. I think he'll be fine. Matt Crook, I think, is going to be this one of the surprise guys to make it. This guy's been – being kind of groomed as a spot starter or a starter. And if you look at his stats, he threw about 130 innings last uh, last season. But I'm going about 7-5, and 4-10 ERA, 110 innings pitching, about 115 strikeouts. In case we get an injury or something for one of our starters, I think he's going to be one of the first guys to get an opportunity. He throws from the left-handed side, so that uh, is a good thing as well. And I think he's I think he's going to pitch. I think he's going to surprise some people. And uh, lastly, Clay Holmes. Another guy who could be closer. I think it's either him or Wiseguy King. A lot of these guys can come Canley. We have a lot of guys who could save 15, 20 games in a season, and maybe even more. I have him going about two and one with a three nineteen ERA. He started to wear down after about 55, 60 innings pitched last season. So I think they're going to keep him around the fifty innings pitch threshold. And once Mike King comes back, I think he'll have his buffer there or a security blanket. They were complementary of each other extremely well, and having more guys of a similar. Crest and Arsenal, I think would be a good thing. So I'm throwing about 50 innings pitch, about 51 strikeouts, and saving a lot of games. I think his he'll be back to his normal self. He'll he'll have right in the ship. And again, he wasn't acquired uh, to kind of try to figure it out. He's going to get the full season here, the spring training experience, and the whole and the whole thing. So I think he'll be uh, pretty good. So that's what I have for you right now, my bullpen. Let me know what you think. Do you have any different projections? Do you have anybody that I haven't mentioned you think might make it? Uh, could make it. Who do you, uh, do you do? You see them trading for somebody or signing somebody? I mean, I I think Andrew Chafin's still out. Well, he is still out there. I just don't know if they have enough uh, leeway and payroll flexibility to get him without surpassing the Steve Cohen threshold. That's my. I think that's a lot of uh, a lot of concerns that we've got from folks. So, but it is what it is. They have enough weapons in their bullpen tool shed to be just fine. To complement and, and again to complement the starting rotation, complement the offense, shut down some games, keep them in games, and and hopefully help them on a road to 28 this year. That's what I got. And keep them. Remember, I'm going to be doing the offense this week. Projections. I'm working on that now. And any other material that comes out, any other news that comes out, you know you're going to get it here. So have a great week, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and your support. And I'll talk to you next time.